Okay, so I thought it'd be useful to do a bit of a summary of this domain and range stuff. Now, the thing I've noticed from doing that exercise that people have found confusing is what the concept of domain and range actually means. So when I say, what's the biggest thing this function can be, I'm talking about what's the biggest thing that the output of the function can be. So if we just quickly flip back to like this slide that we have here, if I'm talking about what's the biggest thing this function can be, I'm not looking at the x-axis, I'm looking at the y-axis. The biggest thing this function can be is 6. The smallest thing this function can be is minus 3. So any time I'm talking about the value of the function or how big the function is, I'm really talking about the range of the function. I'm talking about what the y values are that we have. So as soon as I say, what's the value of the function, where does it correspond on the y-axis? This part of the function corresponds to 6. This part of the function corresponds to 1. That's what I'm talking about by value of the function. So we're just going to do a bit of a summary of some important graphs of what their domains and range actually are. Okay. So um, we've got a few of them here. Just going to do this just to finish up the lesson. So this is a very standard one, the quadratic graph. The domain is the real numbers for the quadratic graph. What are the possible things you can get for the quadratic graph for its range? This is the quadratic graph. What are the possible values you can get from that function? Remember, when I'm talking about values, I'm saying what on the y-axis can be, can be achieved? Greater than, greater than zero? Greater than or equal to zero. Because you see, look, there's nothing down here in the bottom bit. Okay. We've then got the standard function that f of x is 1 over x, like this. The domain is that x is the real numbers, but I have banned x being from equal to 0. Because it can't be 0 because you get an asymptote. But the range is, hmm, what kind of things do you think you can get on the y-axis? You can get anything, anything greater than 0 from this section. But look, this graph is going to give you things less than 0, this branch of the graph. So you can get anything on the y-axis that's not equal to 0. So the way we would say this is we could say that f of x is equal, is a member of the real numbers. Or just to kind of make it even more simple, we can just say the only thing for the range is that f of x cannot be 0. By saying that it can't be 0, I'm saying that it can be everything else. Okay. Now, the natural logarithm graph, some of you, I know, haven't done so much on this, so we're going to try and do a bit of a catch-up lesson on this. The natural logarithm graph looks like this. It's a reflected version of an exponential graph. And just by looking at this, it says that the domain is that x is the real numbers, and the domain is that x is greater than 0. Well, you can tell here. Domain is the how you, what you can do on the x-axis. You can see there's nothing down here in the negative x-axis, and all of the x values have to be greater than zero okay but the range looks like you can just have any value at all for the output you can have absolutely any value so we would just say say sorry that f of x can just be any real number there's nothing that it can't be it can be any real number it can be zero it can be minus 100 it can be a thousand it can be anything arisa is zero, part of the real numbers? zero is a part of the real numbers the real numbers is Every number you can think of from negative infinity to positive infinity. Every number that you can think of, OK? It's a very, very large group of numbers. So e to the x graph, we have talked about this before, but I thought it's worth having this summarized. It's an exponential graph. You can put anything you like into the exponential graph. However, you can only get out of the exponential graph things that are greater than 0. Now, if you haven't come across this, log this natural logarithm before, the natural logarithm is the inverse to the exponential graph. Okay? The log graph and the exponentials are the opposite of each other. Can you see what I mean by them being the opposite to each other here as well? The domain is that x is greater than 0. Here, the range is that f of x is greater than 0. Here, the range is that it can be anything. Here, the domain is it can be anything. So these two graphs are like one is the inverse of the other one. And we're going to explore what that means later on. And we'll try and do some extra bits on logarithms as well. This one is obviously not a standard function. This is just a quadratic. Um, this one says that x can be any of the real numbers. So we better do what, who suggested it at the beginning? I think it was Nabil. We better do what Nabil suggested to this, complete the square. So don't know, whoops. So we're going to have x plus 1 squared minus 1 plus 9. 
So it's x plus 1 squared plus 8. So the smallest thing it can be is 8. Minus 8. Wait, no, 8. 8. So the smallest thing it can be is 8. And it can be equal to 8. And it's just allowed to be anything bigger than that. Because if you imagine a quadratic graph, it's obviously going to be able to go bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Obviously, if it was a negative quadratic graph, that would be a different story because it might flip over. One last thing that we've already looked at before. Um, it, be careful when you look at the, what the domain says. It may be restricted, which similarly restricts the range. So again, using a sketch can be really helpful. So this time, we've got y equals x squared, but it's between minus 1 and 4. So it looks like it'd be that kind of shape. Uh, so what does it look like it's between? Yeah, so we're talking about this section. What's the smallest value of the graph is 0. Biggest thing it's going to be is when x is equal to 4. So it's going to be between 0 and 16. And both of those can be included. Whoops, it shouldn't say x. It should say f of x. So notice domain x, range f of x. Now, I will wrap that recording up, and then I'll just talk to you about some...